can definitely see that that left horn is quite abnormal. At some point it's going to start poking yeah, him in the face, which is going to be unpleasant for him. Before we start the procedure, we need to administer a nerve block. So we're just going to put a whole bunch of local in here. When we're actually doing the action of sawing, it's producing some heat, which will naturally cauterise the vessels, so we don't get a lot of bleeding. Today, mobile vet Allison is swapping the city for rural Queensland and an interesting challenge. Brad, who's the founder of Animal Farm Rescue, has just given me a call. He's got a patient that he urgently wants me to check out. Brad runs a cattle property and one of his steers is in trouble. Hi Brad, how are you? What a beautiful location we're in. This is just stunning. Look at this view. And welcome to Farm Animal Rescue. Thank you for having me. Yeah. We don't really sort of notice it so much oh, anymore. It's but stunning. Um, the yeah. drive here was just beautiful. It's like out of a storybook. I hear you've got a interesting patient for me today. We do indeed. We've got Boris ready to go. And his problem is that he's got a horn that's about to grow into the side of his cheek. Oh dear. Okay, let's go check him out. Sure. Brad tells me that today we'll be treating his steer. I'm automatically a little bit nervous because I know these are big animals and I'm not used to treating them every single day. And here he is. I'm anxious, but I'm also very interested to see what we'll be doing. You can definitely see that that left horn is quite abnormal. So what's been going on? Well, we picked up about four or five months ago that we were a little bit concerned about the direction that the horn was going. Yeah. So we've been monitoring, but as you can see, it's now at the point where he could start to get the horn actually growing into the side of his yeah, cheek, which of course we don't want. Right there, isn't it? It's very, very close. And compared to the other side, I suppose the other side is further set yeah. so, and it's not growing into the face, whereas the other one is actually poking right exactly in. Exactly right. Yeah, that's in a dangerous location, buddy. We really do need to do something about that horn straight away. He's quite a fierce guy. So he's quite happy to just come up and just push you. Oh. So if he's, if he's hungry, he'll just come up and he'll just push you from the front. <laughs> but the problem is that a gentle push for him, of course, has 600 kilos behind it. Okay, you're a bit feisty, Boris. Does that mean we've got our work cut out for us today? <laughs> you're giving me that look. I'm actually quite scared about this one. <laughs> well, it definitely looks like I have my work cut out for me. I am going to have to ring in the forces, phone a friend, see if I can get some help today. So I give my friend Malcolm a call, who's a large animal vet, and thankfully he's free today. So he's going to be coming straight here to help me. Okay, this is where Boris is at the moment. He thinks it's a piece of cake. I'm a little bit more nervous, but I feel happy that he's here today to talk me through it step by step. Hey, my guy, how are you? So as you can see, the left horn is the one that's dangerously close to that cheek. The right one's also growing downwards, but it's set further aside, so Brad's definitely worried about that left one. Yeah, it's not touching yet, but I guess at some point it's gonna start poking yeah, him in the face, which gonna is gonna be, be unpleasant for him. Unpleasant and uncomfortable. Yeah. My first impression of Boris is that he's a big lad. If he doesn't want to do something, it's going to be hard to get him to do it. Usually the easiest way for these big, thick horns like that, we use some thing called um, fetotomy wire or embryotomy wire. Yep. Some people refer to it as piano wire. So it just uses friction just to, to saw off the horn. Of course, he's not going to be all that keen on that. So we'll sedate him and also do a nerve block because there is blood vessels and nerves down the horn a yeah. reasonable distance there. Oh. So um, What is he doing? <laughs> he's just coming to say good day. Okay. <laughs> Before he is sedated, Boris is being shepherded into a crush. That's the way, Boris. Keep going, Manny. Which will hopefully keep him still during the procedure. Beautiful. Is he going to flinch? Hopefully not. There's our problem when he does that. OK, just draw back again, mate. Oh, oh. my gosh. Boris. Boris! Before we start the procedure, we need to administer a nerve block. So we're just going to put a whole bunch of local in here. Here we go. So that Boris definitely won't be feeling any pain. Oh, Boris. You're still alive, aren't you, Matt? If we get it in the right spot, it's going to block the nerves to that horn. So we just need to give that a little while to work. OK. So this is the wire. It doesn't feel like much there, but it just, just relies on friction. So. Malcolm brings out the embryotomy wire, which is actually the device that we're going to use to saw the horn off slowly. I try not to cut anything other than the horn. This is really just a braided wire so that when we're actually doing the action of sawing, it's producing some heat which will naturally cauterise the vessels so we don't get a lot of bleeding. Just initially we just want to go slowly just until we can sort of convince ourselves that it's, it's making a groove and it's, it's in the one spot. 
I think that's pretty good. I reckon you can give it a burst. Let's move the ear out of the road yeah, a little I'm bit. I'm a bit worried about that ear. No, no, the ear's all good. The risk associated with the procedure is that we're not quite sure how much blood is going through those horns. There could be a lot of bleeding, there could be minimal bleeding. So we really have to be quite cautious about that. So you can really, so big long strokes now and harder and faster. Can you doing your workout at the gym. We could be here oh. a while. You're getting somewhere now, I think. Oh, I can smell that. Keep going. You're slowing oh. down, Alison. Mark! <laughs> Let me know if you want me to take over. So getting actually that first groove started is not that hard at all. But when we get down to the nitty gritty of actually getting those larger cuts through, I'm actually feeling the pain on my arm. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Boris. No, he's not complaining. He's not feeling that one little bit. It's moving slowly. We're maybe halfway. I'm just thinking, how can this be halfway through? I'm absolutely exhausted. It is a lot of work. I'm nearly there, Boris. Beautiful. Good job, Alison. So the horn's finally off. There's just a tiny little blood, so we're going to pop a bandage on there just to seal off the vessels, which will stop in time. Is it blue? It's blue and pretty. We'll also spray on some fly spray to get the flies away. Just see if we can bandage this on here, just apply a little bit of pressure. I think that'll stay on long enough to stop the bleeding. We're really, really happy with today. It's been very, very successful. Come big fella. How'd you go, mate? Good boy. There's minimal bleeding. It's good news for us, and it's really good news for Boris. Hi, I'm Dr. Kate, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen for more great content. And for free, exclusive, never seen before Bondi Vet stories, you can sign up to bondipet.com and you can do so via the link in the description.